Here we are with part B1 of the January 2023 Regents exam. We're going to go through and explain all the answers here. This is 20 questions in this part, 50 total multiple choice, and then 85 total points for the chemistry Regents exam. Get that reference table out, get the pen and paper ready, and let's go. So for 31 here, it's asking what is the net charge of a monatomic ion that has 15 protons, 16 neutrons, and 18 electrons. Don't let the word monatomic fool you. That would just mean a single charged atom. It could be something like Na plus or O2 minus. For charge, we got to go to our protons and our electrons. We have 15 pluses and 18 minuses. Right? The difference between 18 and 15 is 3. We have three more negative charges. That makes the answer here choice 4. For question 32, we're dealing with the naturally occurring isotopes of uranium. An atomic mass determination question comes up on every exam. You have to be ready for it. You can't just add the masses and divide by 2. It can't be 3 and 4. It's what's known as a weighted average because the percentages aren't 50% and 50%. The 37.4 and 62.6. So the setup would be you take the mass times the abundance, divide this by 100. So 184.95 times 0.374 and 186.96 times 0.626. And sure enough, it's here in choice two. Question 33, which general trend is observed as the elements in period 2 are considered from left to right? So we're going across the periodic table. Does the atomic mass decrease? That is for sure a no. The electronegativity, does that increase? That is a yes. Melting point, does it increase? That is a no. And first ionization energy decreasing, that is a no. Well, how do I figure this out? atomic mass you would just go to the periodic table for the other three you could go to reference table s and what you could do is you could spot three elements in period two which is row two and then look at the general trend i know in period two we have fluorine at the very end and fluorine has the highest electronic negativity at 4.0 so that definitely means as we're going towards fluorine, the electronegativity is increasing. That's question 33. For question 34, which formula represents chromium 3 oxide? Well, the Roman numeral tells me not the number of chromiums, but the charge for chromium. If you don't know chromium is Cr, look it up, although the four choices are all Cr's. So I have Cr with a plus 3, and then oxide is oxygen and the charge is minus two. If you don't know what is minus two, go to the periodic table, go to the oxygen uh, element box, and you'll see it in the upper right-hand corner. Since we have to even out electrons lost and electrons gained, we're gonna go ahead and just switch the numbers from the charges, and we end up with Cr2O3, which is choice three. For 35, we have a balanced equation. What mass of KCl is produced when we have 24.51 grams of KClO3? I always tell my students, put the numbers above the equation. So 24.51 grams, and it reacts completely to produce 9.6 grams of O2. How many grams? Let's see, what is the mass of the KCl? There we go, there's our X. Well, you don't have to go crazy. This isn't a mass mass stoichiometry type question. In fact, they're not even on the Regents exam. This is all conservation of mass. The mass I start with has to be equal to the mass I end with. In other words, 24.51 is equal to x plus 9.6. Get out your calculator and calculate the answer. Sure enough, I did just that, and the answer is choice two. All right, for 36, which equation represents conservation of atoms? Well, you know the atoms and the types of atoms you start with, you have to end with. This is a fancy way of saying, hey, which one of these equations is balanced? Well, let's go through process of elimination. If I go with choice one, 
I start with titanium. I have one on the left and one on the right. But when I go to oxygen, I have two on the left and three on the right. It can't be choice one. Go to choice two. I have one uh, titanium on the left, one on the right. Oxygen's, uh, again, not balanced. I go to choice three. I have three titanium on the left, three on the right. For oxygen, three times two, which is six. Two times three, which is six. We're, we're almost there. Oh, wait a minute. For aluminum, two on the left and two times two or four on the right. Not our answer. Sure enough, our balanced equation is going to be choice four. Question 37, one mole of bromine gas has a mass of. Bromine gas, they gave it to us. We didn't even have to realize it was a diatomic. I'm going to go find the atomic mass on the periodic table and just double it. Here we have bromine, 79.9. I'm going to double that for my mass of one mole. When we do that, the answer is 159.8. For 38, we're given an equation. Notice what we have. We have to describe or, or name what type of equation. I have sodium chloride, and I'm getting sodium and chlorine. It is breaking apart. If it's breaking down, it's decomposition. Remember, decomposition, you only start with one reactant. Synthesis is the opposite. You would only end up with one product. What's double and double replacement? Two compounds you start with, two compounds you end with. What's single and single replacement? One compound on one side, one on the other. All right, in question 39, which statement describes the charge and the radius of magnesium ion formed when a magnesium atom loses two electrons? I can't say this enough. MELPS helps. MELPS is a made-up word. Metals, electrons, lose, become positively charged and smaller. MELPS definitely helps. So with that in mind, let's check out the answers. Magnesium is a metal. All metals are losers. They're losing electrons, which are negatively charged, that makes them positive. So right away, let's get rid of choice two, because magnesium is not going to be a negative ion, and choice four. Then what do I know about the radius? The radius is going to be smaller. And there it is, choice three. MELPS helps. For 40, an oxide ion, or O2 minus, has the same electron configuration as an atom of which noble gas? Let's go to the periodic table for this. All right, well, we have oxygen. Oxygen gains two electrons. And you move two spaces to the right, literally. And what noble gas is it? Neon. That makes our answer for question 40, choice two. For 41, what is the vapor pressure of propanone at 45 degrees Celsius. This is not something where you have to calculate a gas law problem. This is going to the vapor pressure diagram. Vapor pressure, propanone, 45 degrees. Let's do it. Okay, so what I did so far is I drew the line at 45 degrees. You can't see it in the screen right now, but this line here all the way to the left is the propanone line. At 45 degrees, the vapor pressure, if I come on over, and read it on the y-axis, the y it goes up by tens, is going to be 70 kPa. Mark up the, the graphs and the tables when you're doing the test or even practicing. We don't want to make any mistakes. It's like not using calculator to calculate things. Make sure you're using your calculator too. So for 41, our answer was choice three. All right, it looks like we're going to the reference table again. Here in 42, based on table G, what is the mass of KCl that must be dissolved in 200 grams of water at 10 degrees to make a saturated solution? We're looking at the solubility graph. We're looking for KCl. Now it's 200 grams of water. On the y-axis, you're going to see it says 100 grams. We want to know how much is going to fit in 200 grams of water at 10 degrees. On the line, remember, it's saturated. Below the line is unsaturated, above the line is supersaturated. So let's go do that. Okay, so I got to find the KCL line. Here it is, it's coming down. All right, it hits, it crosses here at 10 degrees, and it looks to be at 30. But remember, that's in 100 grams of water. Check out that y axis. I got to double this. So it's going to be 60 grams in 200. So for 42, that makes the answer choice three. 
of 43, we're going back to the table. Reference table I, it's asking which chemical equation represents a reaction with a heat of energy that indicates a net release of energy. In other words, that's a fancy way of saying exothermic. For these reactions, if you have exothermic, in other words, release of energy, you're going to have numbers that have negative signs. There's even a little footnote at the bottom. We're looking for NO, NO2, C2H6, and C2H4. Okay, we're here at table I. Let's scroll down and let's find what we're looking for. All right, I've circled all of the products because I have to go back and forth. You have the luxury, of course, you should have the test open and the reference table open side by side. And sure enough, you can see four delta H's, it's only the C2H6 that has the negative sign, which means it's exothermic and releasing energy. That makes our answer for 43, choice three. For 44, the greatest increase in entropy occurs when one gram of sample of water changes from. The further away the molecules are from one another, the more entropy, the more disorder, the more randomness. So we have solid to liquid, solid to gas, well, right away, solid to gas, totally beat solid to liquid gas to liquid that's less disorder liquid to solid that is less disorder that makes the answer here choice two for question 45 we have the good old particle diagrams our circles here and it says which one represents one substance only remember a substance is an element or a compound compound of course are different atoms of elements bonded together the only answer it could be here would be choice one. Choice two, you have two different diatomic elements. Choice three, you have two different compounds. And choice four, you have two different elements. Again, choice one. Okay, so for 46, we got to go to reference table J. We're looking for a metal that's going to lose electrons to calcium ions. Now we have these four metals. You need to know what the symbols are. Aluminum is Al, lead Pb, nickel Ni, and potassium K. If you don't, you have to go to reference table S first, then table J. So let's do this. All right, let's see if you can't figure out the answer without too much to be said. Here's our calcium and the four metals again. Aluminum, lead, nickel, and the last one is potassium. Gee, you think you know the answer? There's three on the bottom and one on the top. Potassium is a more active metal than calcium, so therefore potassium's electrons will go to the calcium ions. So for 46, the answer is 4. If we go to 47, it says, which aqueous solution is the best conductor of an electrical current? Well, you got to have ions. The more ions you have, the better. Now, all four of these solutes are sodium nitrates. That doesn't matter, so all that's going to matter is the concentration. And look what's the highest, choice two. For 48, given the equation, right, which type of equation is, is this? Well, when you see mass numbers and atomic numbers, you have a nuclear equation. Nuclear equations include decay, that's beta and alpha decay, fission and fusion, and then transmutation. So it's not a phase change. So it's either fission or fusion, and I have light nuclei that are making a heavy nuclei, and that is fusion. Question 49, which represents 2-butene? Now, there's two reference tables. Bute, B-U-T, tells me I have a four-carbon chain. The E and E ending tells me I have a double bond in that chain. Therefore, it cannot be choice three, and it cannot be choice four. 2-butene means the double bond starts on a second carbon. Here, in number one, if I count my carbon chain, one, two, three, and four, it's starting on the first carbon. For choice two, one, two, three, four, it's starting on the second carbon. So choice two is my answer. Finally, question 50. We're given a compound and we're asked what represents an isomer of that compound. An isomer, an isomer means the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, same number of oxygens, but different arrangement. 
if I look at my starting compound here, I have three carbons. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens and one oxygen. Well, it can't be choice two. There's two oxygens there. All right, I got to take a look here. And let's see, choice one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen. I have three carbons and one oxygen. That looks like the answer, but let's double check. For choice three, I have three carbons, one oxygen, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Not my answer. And finally, for choice four, I have three carbons, one oxygen, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Can't be choice four. So the answer is choice one. I hope I helped. Keep working hard. Check out more videos. Check out those shorts. And good luck.